Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next war recap video. And you guys probably saw some of this, or at least the end of it, in the uh, Live on War Day video, uh, which just came out yesterday. But this is the recap of it, and it was an extremely close war, as you guys saw. Um, a quick look at the bases. They got the top six two starred, then they got some of our uh, nines three, or sorry, some of our tens three starred, including our 9.5s. I think it's us three or 9.5s, and obviously all the nines three starred. Uh, we pretty much the same thing, just the difference was we had one of our 11s take care of the uh, Town Hall 10 right there, and then besides that, exactly identical. Uh, got kind of the lower level 9, 9.5 base, or lower level 10, 9.5 bases and uh, two star the top area. So anyway, we're gonna take a look at a few attacks and I wanna show a Town Hall 10 hitting a Town Hall 11 because this is the kind of thing that frees up our Town Hall 11s to go down, three star the Town Hall 10s, which really makes the difference in the war a lot of the time. So it's important that uh, 10s can do this and um, we're gonna take a look <coughs> at Terrace attack <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, drops down the healers first, actually, which is kind of cool, just to make sure that the, as soon as the queen goes down, uh, she's going to be healed, because obviously the healers won't go anywhere unless there's something to heal. So anyway, goes ahead and drops that rage. I'm not sure how she was supposed to go, because she takes that out, then she goes back the other way after she deals with these CC troops. Um, so I guess the rage worked out nicely, though, because he would have needed it anyway. There's the two-point defense right there. But comes in with the golem, a few wall breakers. That eagle is active, and as soon as that eagle gets fired up, you know you got to be coming in quick. There's not a whole lot of time to spare because it will destroy your attack if you wait too long. So pretty quickly makes that funnel. The queen on the uh, bottom side, the king and the golem and the wizards on the left. Comes in with the valks here, has the nice rage. Just let them go th right through the wall, and then has a couple freezes to deal with both the uh, inferno and the eagle. Actually misses that one Inferno, but uses the other Freeze to get the Inferno and a few Teslas. So successful there for the most part. And that core is obviously going to be cleared out very quickly, especially with that second Rage going down. So uh, anyway, everything's taking a lot of damage right here, and it's going to peter out. But he has just enough to get the uh, two-star secured, and it helped that the Eagle went down because it can't target some of these minions and archers. And you can't always count on that, so sometimes you want to get uh, the minions and archers down at the beginning if you can. But obviously, not, you can't always do that because there's defenses in the way. So anyway, awesome attack to Terrace, getting the 3-star. And actually, that's kind of what, free, I guess you could say, freed up Vietha to go down and get that one. Because uh, otherwise, the 11s have to try to 2-star these bases, and that eases up some of their attacks. So anyway, you guys saw a lot of the Town Hall 10 3-stars in the last video. So if you haven't watched that, you can go back and watch that and see all of them happen live. Or most of them, I missed a few, because they attacks happen simultaneously but anyway there's still one town hall 10 3 star to look at and this one is thor coming in here against a pretty solid uh town hall 10 base it has these max archer towers has the high level heroes and uh i guess the max infernos i can't see anything else that's the wizard towers too so um it, it this base is pretty taken care of just has those cannons and the uh Expos under leveled and uh, looks like this attack was pretty quick actually because we're only just starting in about two minutes and uh, I guess he just ran right through this base. You can see he actually has 12 hogs So I mean not just a pure Valk attack by any means, but anyway the queen goes down uh, She's gonna take care of that compartment right there. Nice little funnel by the wizards uh, Nice and safe making sure that she's not gonna go up top there. I don't think they get that elixir storage, but it doesn't matter anyway. She's making her way around the base and uh, already coming in with the king. A few wizards. That's kind of what I've been seeing lately. No golem. Just come in here with the king on the other side, create a funnel, and go straight in. Has the P.E.K.K.A. in the CC, which is interesting, but I guess he wants a little more DPS uh, to take care of some high HP buildings and maybe some more hit points for whatever reason to help tank for the Valks or whatever. But a nice little touch, I guess. I think it worked out pretty well. Comes in with the hogs. Doesn't have any heals left. He used them all on the Valks to clear out those uh, kind of middle two compartments. But you can see the hogs are doing just fine with everything tanking for them. Lava Hound in the CC isn't going to be much of an issue for them. Although the Queen is going to target it. Unfortunately, the King and the Valks, or the King and the Pekka, I mean, kind of peeled off here. But he still has the Valks. The healers got on the Valks, which works out great because the Queen doesn't need them at the moment. And uh, you'll see... The queen is 
about to bust that Lava Hound, but has the Poison down, which helps a little bit against Lava Pups, but to be honest, the Poison doesn't really do much, because they're so flimsy anyway. Uh, I mean, they're getting one-shotted, it's just the number of them that's an issue. Anyway, though, the Queen is taking quite a bit of damage here, and the he there's only one healer left up due to, I think, air defenses. Uh, that P.E.K.K.A. and the King obviously going around, and the King still has his ability, so that's great. Um, right here, no issue on time, even though everything's kind of going around in a weird way, because as you saw, it was a two-minute attack. So anyway, the healer will get on that P.E.K.K.A. and just give all the troops a little bit of love as they go around, but has the king's ability in the bag still. That queen's about to shoot down that uh, cannon, and uh, we'll go ahead and go times two here, because it's just about getting through the wall and taking out those last few buildings. Awesome attack to Thor, getting the three-star on a pretty solid base. Okay, let's take a look at some Town Hall 9 attacks, and I'm going to mix it up, not going to be, you know, Valk attacks. I don't know if I have any Valk attacks in here, actually. We're going to take a look at three of them, and I also have some attack strategy uh, attacks that I'm saving for that kind of video. So there was quite a few of a certain type of attack, and I'm not going to say which it was, but uh, I will say that you'll probably be seeing an attack strategy video coming out soon uh, on a certain type of... Uh, part of an attack, so just stay tuned for that. I'll see when I can get that out, but I'll get those recorded soon. Anyway though, uh, on this one it's Nano John, and he's doing the Golem Avalanche attack. I still see these dead zone bases all the time, even in you know high level war clans, and uh, they can just be beaten by this attack if you do it right, for the most part, especially if the Teslas aren't in the core. Because uh, sometimes, the the, sometimes the Teslas can be in the core, Sometimes the Tesla's kind of a tongue twister, I guess. Sometimes they are in the core, and that can throw off the attack a little bit, but I don't think they are in this one. Has the poison for the CC troops. One thing you always want to do, and I, I saw an attack fail because of this pretty recently, you always want to get those jumps down early. And the reason is the golems should have to be out in front. You don't want your king, your queen, your wizards getting shot down. You need that DPS back there to keep moving through the base, keep uh, everything going forward and get those defenses down as quickly as possible. And the reason is the jumps allow the golems to keep moving forward while the everything else is back still taking out some of the trash buildings. So if you drop the jump too late, the king and everything will start beating on the wall and then it's just a, a, you know, a, a chance by odds if the king gets targeted. And because he's quicker, if everything has is at the same starting line when the jump goes down, the king will obviously go out in front of the golems. So you want to really make sure that the jump is down early. Let the golems go out in front while the king is still back, uh, taking care of trash buildings. Because typically you're not going to run out of time. You're not going to run out of time on the jumps. They last. They last for a pretty decent amount of time. So get the jumps down early is what I would say. But anyway, it was a good attack here by Nano John. I think his jumps were pretty solid on their timing. And uh, if you finish with that many wizards and the queen's still up, you've done something right. I like the few extra hogs. He didn't really use them that much, but uh, they were there if he needed them to target certain defenses. Anyway, nice attack, Nano John. All right, uh, 22. This is Nate coming in with a just traditional, couldn't be more standard, uh, shattered uh, Golaloon. And is it shattered? Yeah, I think it's shattered. No, cold-blooded. Yeah, I, I can never get the terminology down. One golem is my point. One golem, four lava hounds. Very standard, what you used to see uh, kind of in the... A little while back in Clash of Clans before the Valks were powerful and uh, before people started doing offset bases. But this guy decided to put his air defense right next to the queen, which opens up a lot of things you can do. You can even use lightning spells. But he just comes in here because uh, one golem plus his heroes is plenty to deal with the CC troops. Also, one thing you want to look for is if you can get some bonus defenses. He gets the Sweeper, a Wizard Tower, and I think the Queen will step up and get a few Teslas or something too. So, great value beyond just the CC troops, the Queen, and the Air Defense, which are all musts for, the, for this attack. They're all necessities. Beyond that, he gets extra value, which makes it easier on his balloons. And uh, you can see drops down the first Rage to keep those balloons moving. A standard just deployment like we've always seen. And look how far out in front that haste spell is. It might have been a little bit late, but that's how you want to drop it. You want to drop those out in front. Let them get the effect of it early because that way um, it'll still affect them even after they leave it because there's that de the delay after they leave it. It's still affecting them, as you can see right there. 
and uh, that's why you want to get down early and let them get the effect as soon as possible of the haste spell. So does a good job propelling his balloons along and uh, finishes it off right here. No air defenses left up, no wizard towers left up, which can be a threat when the balloons are all clumped up. So pretty easily the balloons go over there, get the last few defenses. Doesn't have a whole lot still up, the heroes went down, but has a bunch of lava pups and uh, a wizard to help for cleanup. Awesome attack to Nate. Let's take a look at one more base, and this was kind of a fun attack, and something that actually can work very well, especially uh, with how Valks are in the game right now. I do have one Valk attack. I said I might not have any. This is kind of an unorthodox attack for Valks. You can see here it's pretty much exclusively uh, redheads, and he is not bringing any jumps or quakes or only four wall breakers, so not any kind of like uh, wall bypassing method here. So he goes ahead and lets the Valks kind of beat through the wall. And this is a good substitute, I guess, to Surgical uh, Go Wee Wee or Golem Avalanche. It's a good substitute to that attack because it works well on the, on the dead zone bases. It can work even better than the Golem Avalanche if you know how to direct your Valks. That's very important because without any jump spells or anything like that, you're taking a big risk because the Valks could go crazy on you. But if the... If there's nothing in that core that's going to be too attractive to them, just a few builder's huts, those two are touching, but they're kind of a little bit far away. As long as that's the case, the Valks should go out in kind of a circle, and you need you need these wizards, and you can even use a few other Valks that you don't uh, deploy to keep everything in the base. You don't want them leaving. And you can see right here, the king plus a few Valks all leave the base, but luckily all this trash is cleared out, so they have to continue on. The main group already went out in front, and... Um, because you're not bringing any jumps, you have you know up to four heals to use on them. And that's just insane uh, when you think about how powerful Valks are already. But Valks under heal, pretty much no section of the base can deal with them. He has so many still left up. Drops that next heal. Just now is dealing with the heroes. And uh, I'm not sure if the queen was supposed to go in. I kind of missed that at the beginning of the attack. But it looks like she did just fine. And she'll step up, take out the enemy king actually. But anyway, uh, you can see by clearing out the trash buildings as the Valks went around the base, he made sure they all kind of stayed within the base and kept progressing in that clockwise or counterclockwise motion. So it worked out real nice. Look at how many Valks he has left up. Just crazy. This is a very uh, powerful attack strategy, especially for dead zone bases if you prefer it over golems and wizards, but both work out very nicely. And we saw quite a few dead zone bases, whether it's the wall compartments or the like the wall pieces or actual trash buildings. They're both dead zone as long as they don't have any defenses in them. But anyway, a good war to the Black Road. Uh, they're a very high level war clan. Uh, check, check them out real quick right there. They have a YouTube uh, apply online, I think. I think they're part of a bigger family. I'm not that familiar with them, uh, but you can see they're part of the fair play war community. So. Uh, it's always fun to get mashed up with one of these clans. Wish it was during the weekend, which is always makes it a little bit easier to plan attacks and really get the most out of it. But we still had a fun war, and it was extremely close. So anyway, good job to both clans. That's going to do it for this recap. And what do you know, we have WHF2. Just got a random match with them again. This week's going to be crazy, especially because we're looking to have an arranged war this weekend. So just an insane week as far as matchups go. But... Um, We'll see how this one turns out. You'll probably see a little bit of this one covered as well. But like I said, have that attack strategy video I still want to do from some of the attacks from the last war. So stay tuned for that and possibly some WHF2 coverage later in the week. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.